A Bergen County scientist was an early pioneer in the study of climate change, and today, more than 50 years into his career, Wallace Broker remains a force in the field. Science and technology correspondent Patrick Regan spoke with Broker recently at Columbia University and begins a two-part report starting with Broker's most influential discoveries. When geochemist Wally Broker first visited this campus, Columbia's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, which straddles the state line at the Palisades, he was an undergraduate at a different school. But he soon found himself running the radiocarbon lab here, and now, for a long time now, he holds the Newberry Professorship, named for one of the original pioneers in American geology. On June 15th, 1952, I drove up the front road here and uh, never left. <laughs> The citation for one of Broker's many awards, the Crawford Prize, often described as the Nobel Prize for Geosciences, calls him the person who has contributed most to our understanding of how carbon and climate are linked. The so-called conveyor belt of global ocean circulation is one important concept he put on the map, but it's just part of the picture. At first, it was, we were curious. We wanted to know, you know, why was there an ice age and uh, what's it trying to tell us? But as time passed and we learned more and more about climate, it became clear that there was something else that we could learn. He developed two separate lines of research that came together in a powerful way, revealing much of what's known today about how carbon cycles through the atmosphere and oceans and about the complex interplay between these mechanisms and climate. I was using radiocarbon in the ocean to say something about the time scale of large-scale mixing in the ocean. So in a sense, I was doing physical oceanography. But I was also studying paleoclimate, using, again, radiocarbon as a way to get ages of things and correlate events in one part of the world with events in another part of the world. Ice cores enabled measurements from past glacial and interglacial times, which showed atmospheric carbon and average global temperatures rising and falling in lockstep. Even before this was firmly established, Broker asserted that fossil fuel use would force global warming. I got an award in Rome, and the person that uh, introduced me said that my greatest accomplishment was being the first one to use the term global warming. And that sort of stunned me because I didn't realize, number one, that I was the first, and I hoped that that wasn't why people remembered me. It annoyed me because I've written something like 480 scientific papers, and if I'm, rem if I'm remembered for two words that I happen to use in the title of a paper, that would be awful, a wasted career. Broker looks to the future in part two of our report. Patrick Regan, NJN News. Palisades, New York.